Uh, okay, hello everyone to this session, um, which is going to be about uh, the standing job descriptions. Um, so um, let's start and jump right in. Um, let me share my screen. And uh, okay. Right. Okay. So. Um, all right, I suppose you can see my screen now. So, all right. So to start, I'm going to ask you this question. When you come across a job opportunity or like a job uh, ad, um, how do you go about deciding whether it is suitable for you or not? Like, um, and I want to hear from you. So, like, what do you do, basically? I, I suppose you haven't um, started yet uh, the job application part, but like this is, um, um, like what do you think you would do, basically? to decide uh, that a job is suitable or not. Okay. Joseph? Uh, yes, so I look at um, the entry level, um, at the level of the job, whether if it's entry level, mid-level, or uh, senior level, um, then I proceed to read the job description, or uh, yeah, the work, the scope of the work. All right, good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Hilary? Uh, in, in addition to what Joseph said, I will also look at the experience, the, whatever is in the job description, like the experience uh, and the tools they the tools they need, the, the roles that they, that they will want you to do if, it is, if, you, if you can handle them and if you, know, if you can showcase them from your past experience and uh, decided, looking at all those and the practical examples that can be the, that the pass the, the the role the person in that role could do could help you could help me figure out if um if I can handle that. Okay, that's very good. Um, and what else? Uh, that is Johannes answer. Looking at the requirements first. Okay, that's good. <laughs> So any other, like any other uh, thing that you need to look at, maybe in the job ad or the job description that you pay attention to? Um, uh, okay, so, um, so, okay, so like, um, th these were all very good answers. Um, and these are all like everything that was mentioned. Yes, there are things that you have to um, pay attention to, basically. And we're going to be talking about that, basically, um, um, here. So, um, yeah. So, what we're talking about here is the job description. So, what you have been going through uh, throughout the the week, like be beside pre pre preparing your um, the materials, the duplication materials that w which of course you are preparing to match up with what is required for a job. Um, there's also this part about the company study that you have done uh, or you are doing. So uh, this is also like important to understand, like this is part of how you understand what is required for a job or like what is the environment you'll be working in. So these are also like, these are all related, these are all connected as a part of a whole. So the job description is what the, the employer puts out basically as uh, what is their tool of the, the describing what they want, what they want from, um, from a job, uh, like the, um, their potential employ employees. So um, 
it could be like it's a kind of a bridge between what the organization wants and what like the job seekers should be looking at so um this is like a deliberately put as uh, describing what is a job like um what is the requirement what is the job um the role involved what are roles what are the roles that involve and involve in the job and like who is their ideal candidate um so um this why like you need to basically pay attention to the job description um you're looking at so the job description is con is is made of um like several elements um so some of these elements might not be like um might be like uh, absent sometimes but like uh, they you'll find them in most of the job description. So you start with the title, of course you have a title for the job. This is the first thing that you, you look at, of course. It's um, signals like the level. So I could say like a junior, maybe it's a junior data engineer or like a senior machine learning engineer. So it, it's like uh, indicates the level of the job. So, and also the, like the general nature of it. It's a starting point because it's for it describes something, and I mean when you're applying, you might be tempted to just look at the title and say like, okay, I'm applying for this, I'm not applying for that, and not look at through everything. But this is going to be like a, a mistake, basically. Um, so there is an overview, like uh, which sometimes you'll find like a section about an overview that will give you like. Uh, um, and it's like a, a glimpse into what is the role and how does it fit with the, with the whole company. And um, uh, if you find that, you can look through and understand like basically um, whether to like, is this something that you're, it's more than what the job title is. So it can help you decide whether this, this is like something you continue to invest into like uh, understanding the whole job description or like is it not, completely not suitable. And uh, then you can look at like, uh, what is the responsibility of the job? Like what is going to be daily or like um, the tasks that are like um, required to, to be done by uh, in this job. And of course, uh, like uh, you, you then like uh, from this responsibility can try to picture if you can, like, uh, can you see yourself doing this or not? And um, it, it doesn't have to be something that you have done before, of course, but like, um, can you like with um, grow maybe into doing them? Um, then there is the qualification, the requirements for the qualifications, um, experience and like other skills. These are all um, like you can like these two sections maybe can be the same thing, it can be like it's something that you can glean, not necessarily like a, a, a section in the job description, but you can understand from like um, looking through the job description, what are the qualifications. So this is like the education background, um, training or certification or any other kind of qualification you need. Um, experience, uh, it also includes skills and tools that maybe you need to different level of understanding or like um, different level level of competency at uh, then you have the experience of course um, then like uh, you have the salary so this is not all job description include the salary sometimes it mentions there is a mention of range sometimes it's not so you have to look at that there is also you have to note that so there is also like sometimes there is a mention of compensation like other kinds of besides the salary and other benefits like insurance or like uh, vacation time all of these kind of other um types of compensation there is a culture of the company um okay just uh one moment
I'm sorry for that. Uh, okay, so just continuing, um, I was mentioning the last element of the job descriptions, which is the culture of the company, or like there is an about section about the company. Like, um, and of course you went through this maybe in the company study, how to understand like uh, there is this part of um, like understanding like um, uh, the environment, the work environment, how um, like how the this job fits within the the bigger picture or the bigger structure of the company, uh, and so you you went all through like how to expand on understanding this in your company study basically. But like part of the job description is usually like uh, this is the first the start maybe to look into that. But like uh, of course you can expand by like all the what you can do what you have learned already to do in the in your in your, job, in your company study uh, session and tutorials, sorry, and um, and the uh, uh, submissions that you had to do. Okay, so um, so these are the key elements, as uh, and like your colleagues had mentioned, looking into different parts of this to de determine how suitable you are, and like um, basically. You can do like uh, an analysis basically to when, well, like, this is a deeper thing that can go into uh, when looking at each uh, element or different parts. There are things that you can do basically. It's not, um, as I'm mentioning here, is maybe it's not completely. Um, there are, like, basically, what I'm listing here is like questions you can think of and things that you can do. Uh, how to use, uh, analyze the job description is not necessarily comprehensive. Like um, maybe we can think about other things like to to what is important for you in a job. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so uh, just looking at the title. Sometimes uh, like, um, can you see like there's alignment between qualifications and responsibility between the title and qualification responsibility? So as I mentioned before, the title uh, basically um, signals the level of the job, like it's a junior, senior, or like uh, is it an entry level? This is always happens in like LinkedIn maybe, like because there is this tag that this is an entry level or like a mid senior level job, but sometimes, you will find there is some kind of um, uh, mismatch between the levels, between the title and the description, or the title, the description, and the tag. And um, so sometimes that mismatch is like uh, just an like an oversight, uh, specifically for the tag. Maybe you, uh, like uh, when companies post the jobs on on LinkedIn, maybe they don't pay attention to this part. Uh, but it can be, and this is like um, something that you maybe you can um, can happen uh, sometimes that maybe the company is seeking some senior um, level expertise as an entry level compensation. So um, so this could be like a problem. So just like uh, looking at the title as a um, qualification. They should be aligned. So this is something like you can just um, like if there is a mismatch, maybe just pay attention to that or keep it in mind. Um, other thing, this is like the maybe the most important part: the job requirements. So these are the skills, the education, qualifications, the experience that are listed as essential for the for the position. Sometimes uh, in the job description, they will list uh, require uh, like uh, there will be a list of skills or requirements that not requirement list a list of skills or uh, knowledge that they will say like it's uh, desirable but not not essential. So like it, it, so you have to pay attention that these are like the it, it could increase your chances of getting the job, but it's not. Like it doesn't disqualify you if you don't have all of them. So just like um, pay attention to that as well. Uh, so when you go through this, determine the skills, education, and experience required. You can, if you want, create a list uh, of requirements and assess how much, how 
how do you stack up how do you compare like how do your own the skills you have measure up to these requirements do you match so the matching um you don't need to match perfectly everything this is important so um if there is barely a match if like you don't have most of the requirements then maybe this job is not suitable for you but to determine that it's suitable doesn't need to be a hundred percent match like um if you match like uh, um, a majority of the of the requirements if you can think that you have skills uh, that are can be transferable to the to the job um if there is something that you could learn um like uh, in the meantime basically uh, something that you can acquire quickly and um like also leave like um you can also inf always emphasize that you can you have a readiness to learn to grow and to like adapt to the role um so yeah so the matching here and we will discuss more about how to assess your skills and how to determine the level because there is for all for each skill there are different levels of co competency like you know, like for example just just um, as an example let's say talk about python and uh, python um programming uh, um so oh and you you did this already in your evaluation you have we asked you to evaluate yourself before at what level are is your python um competency so you could be at an and let's say every level it could be really good you could be really excellent so this there are different level of competency so this like um let's say grading uh was just simple um evaluation so it's just like uh, one word you can des decide that you are uh, excellent at this so um yeah and uh, the requirement for a skill uh, in a job will be also related to a particular level so it's not for a job could be that what's required is a really excellent uh, python um, uh, proficiency or it could be required that you just have some kind of knowledge so is uh, like it, the, they will they will differ so you have to know the skill that's required and at what level it is required and uh, and how you measure up to that, of course. Um, so you evaluate yourself also for the skills you have and what level you are at. And when you go through um, the the whole this um, going through this, uh, um, I'm just stepping back outside of this and telling you and saying that going through this supported job uh, job search you are going to be applying for jobs but you're also going to be um improving and upgrading your skills so you are going to be uh trying to improve so which skills you are trying you're going to be trying to improve are the skills that are required in the jobs you are aiming for so you have to when you are going to start your publication you have to keep track of the skills that are required and and the ones that you are not at the level that is required yet or you don't have yet and to try, try to improve on those, those in particular so um this is just uh, from the big picture of this continuing on the other things i can think about identifying required outcomes this is just like um what is like uh, basically understanding what is the role what is the responsibilities and how they fit in the um, in the basically with the rest of the company or the rest of the team um so how like again how does this like work within uh, not just like focusing on the the understanding the job itself needs to understand like how how it will be working with the rest of the of the team of the company this like use every like uh, maybe you don't have all the information for that but uh, sometimes like uh, there will be information in the job description about how it works with like other teams or maybe you can just find that out um like with a little bit of research um 
uh, to to just understand like what will be the dynamics and what will be the deliverables that you will be um, responsible for. Uh, okay, so again, this is the compensation salary. We already talked about this. There is like um, I mean, of course, you have to uh, compare the salary or the compensation with what is expected for someone uh, with your experience, with your skills, and depending, of course, the, the, the location of the job itself, whether like, um, I think this was mentioned to you before, um, so I will not expand on this. Um, Again, and also the company and the culture, this again, you have done this in your company study. So I will also not expand on this part. Um, any questions so far or any comments? I mean, I don't think I said anything that is really um, completely new to all of you. Uh, so the next part, but and of course, if you have any questions, you can just uh, raise your hand at any point. What I want to get into is that like what, I'm, what I have been saying so far is just like um, a general guidance, let's say, or the other thing that you can think of, but it's not really something that's completely systematic or like I have a particular, doesn't follow a particular standard. Like when you are looking at the job description, it, it can be helpful to understand how these job descriptions are written and what is the mindset behind them. Like how do, how like the company comes up with this or the HR department basically, uh, how do they come up with this? Or if there is any kind of um, uh, an industry standard for them. So, so this next part, we're going to be trying to understand the, the, the standard, uh, industry framework. And there is such standards. Um, so there is uh, what's called SFIA um, or SFIA, which is a skills framework for the information age. These are global standards for describing skills and competency required for like jobs uh, in the IT basically or the ICT roles. It's like the standards are general enough that they can be also applied outside of that. But like for, for us, this what is, um, they were like basically uh, um, developed for keeping in mind um, jobs like for um, anything going with data basically. Um, uh, so these were like, uh, um, it's, it's, upda it's updated. You'll find like, uh, on the website, you will find that they have like, um, it's, it's, com it's continuously updated. You'll have a sphere eight, a sphere nine, um, uh, it's, and it's updated like uh, in a collaboration basically from people in the, in these communities. And, uh, so these standards are used by basically uh, they are used by the organizational leaders so by like um, companies can use them to plan as to have a strategic planning for like what um for for their like uh, their workforce resources what are uh, what they need what kind of skills they need in different departments and different uh, and how they will distribute it how they will plan for their workforce to develop, to improve, and to um, progress. Uh, it's used by HR to create role profiles, job descriptions supported by consistent skills and skill level definitions. So this is what like I was trying to, this is what matters to us. Okay, so how this the job description can be written. And you note here there is the skills and skills level definitions. So there are skills and the uh, level. And um, this says that the standards are also useful for individuals because you can assess as a job seeker or as a person who are already working, um, you can assess your current skills, identify where you need to improve, identify your goals and how you are going to get there, basically. Um, like they help to create a CV and like applying for, for jobs, like um, 
uh, suitable jobs and suitable jobs for your skills, experience, and also for your career goals. Um, okay, so just as a look into this, how does it work? So, um, so there are skills, as I said, and they, each skill is defined um, at seven levels of responsibility. That's what they call. And um, the levels of responsibility are described in terms of generic attributes, autonomy, influence, complexity, business skills, and knowledge. And um, uh, okay, so so these are the levels of responsibility. And um, okay. Um, yeah, so you can see these are, uh, I mean, I, I don't like, um, maybe it sounds complicated or um, the, because these are generic, they might sound like, um, what does this mean? But we'll see in a moment how this applies to particular skills. But just to get a taste, like this is a level one, it's called follow. This uh, in autonomy part, this like uh, uh, keep in mind this uh, like um, for a particular for a particular skill or um, is going to be defined for a particular skills. But like in gen the generic attributes are, for example, the autonomy. Um, for at level one, uh, the person will be working works under direct close direction, so they don't work alone. They only work under guidance. They seek guidance for an unexpected situation, and they use, use little discretion. So they only make very little decisions. They only follow directions. They mainly follow directions and will seek guidance for any unexpected situation. Uh, for influence, they are making minimal influence, so they don't, um, they don't make um, uh, uh, like a great um, decision for others. They work, interact with immediate colleagues. Um, the complexity is um, like perform routine activities in a structured environment, um, um, like uh, require assistance in resolving unexpected problems. Uh, so, and um, okay, so I participate in gener generation of new ideas. Just, gen just participate. Uh, like and um, looking at other levels of responsibility, you can compare how this changes as the levels increases. Um, so business skills, this would be like um, yeah, so the communication skills, uh, basic users use uh, uses basic systems. So yeah, so a point, important point to mention here is that the sphere is not defined for particular tools or applications of software, meaning. So it's just like, it's a generic definition. Um, so applying it to, um, you, you need to apply the, like uh, define the basic systems and tools. This will be um, like defined by like uh, the users, basically of this, of this framework. Um, then you have the knowledge and this like um, having basic generic knowledge. This is for the level one and uh, apply newly acquired knowledge so yeah so so just to give a taste because it sounds like at least for me this sounds like uh, okay it's a lot of blah 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 i don't get what is uh, the point but like if look let's look at a particular skill which is machine learning you can find this at the sphere uh, website basically here you can see so they have skills so they define like um, the framework of course you can take this uh, what they define as uh, seven levels of responsibility and define it for a particular skill on your own or the users can do that basically but there are already like defined skills on their website or they're already like uh, um so you can see like there is uh 
a directory with skills here. There's also like many skills, but there are things that you can like matter to us, for example. Um, so as you can see here, there are testing, uh, there is um, database design, data engineering, and uh, what I was looking at is machine learning, machine learning. So you can see that like um, at level two, which, uh, okay, let's, let's look at level two, is level two is assist. So this assist, like um, the autonomy works under routine direction, uses limited discretion, and determine when to seek guidance in unexpected situations. So this is a level two. What we looked at before was level one. Um, and just like uh, looking at the machine, so machine learning skill will be defined at each level of this possibility. Um, so for level two is defined as applies given machine learning techniques to data under the guidance of technical leadership, analyzes our report finding and remediates simple issues using algorithm implemented in a standard software framework and tools. So at level two, this is uh, like a person who have operates uh, or have the skill of machine learning at level two will be able to only apply machine learning techniques given machine learning techniques to data. So if one told apply this machine learning technique to data, they can do that. At level three, um, this will be like um, people who can able to adapt to new problems and data sets, so they can come up with what machine learning techniques to apply to new problems, to evaluate the, perf the uh, common performance and identify issues and new comments improve machine learning system and data they use. So you can see what is the difference between level two and level three. Um, and of course, once you go to level four, level five and level six, there will be like in, in increased, increased um, autonomy, increased knowledge and increased uh, business skills as you go forward. So you can look at this and evaluate yourself. Where do you fall? Within this, um, within this um, evaluation. So, I suppose if you have managed to like uh, implement the challenges from the previous twelve weeks, you are not operating at level two. You are not operate uh, properly. Not operating only at level three. Your um, or like maybe you are in level four or higher. Like I'm just like, um, none of you is going to be at level two because you have implemented things to new problems and evaluated the outcome of performance, have recommended, have or asked to recommend improvement to what you are applying. So things like that. So you, and I suppose that this makes it more clearer how this works, how this is fair framework uh, is applied. Um, and like maybe you now you get a, a, a feel or like a sense of why it is useful or why you are talking about it basically. Um, so yeah, I was discussed like how the skills are described in this way, basically how it goes, like there is a skill name, the skill code and the general description. So um, a brief description of the, of the skill. There's a guidance note that will tell you what activities, like an um, example of like uh, the application of the skill, like without, it's descriptive, so not, not everything that is done, but like some examples of how it, it is applied, the skill is applied. And then there is a, a detailed description at different levels, how the skills um, um, is defined for each level. So I, yeah, so I already went through this without like um, explaining the different parts, but yeah, this is how it works. You can see that from their website. Okay, so um, how to use this basically, and you're going to get more into um, this maybe next week when we will be introduced into this sleep system. Uh, but you can understand that, like, basically, you can use um, the sphere 
framework to evaluate your own skills. Um, so the, the main thing that I was talking about before is to understand, like, um, you can basically use it to evaluate your own skills and understand the job descriptions given by like companies when they ask for particular skills as well as different levels. Um, so now you have a standard of what it means to be operating at a particular level for a skill. So there in examples, what are, um, what are the, like the, the detailed description of what you should be able to do. And um, so basically um, this is not something that I'm like, it's not exactly something that you're asked to do right now, but it's just like, um, let's say for now it's a suggestion or a recommendation that you can use Sphere to evaluate your own skills. Um, thinking about like what skills you can do like um, and generally in the in the jobs, what skills do you need to do, and uh, like then evaluating the level at which uh, like the skills you have and the skills you need, and how do you go about to de like developing a plan to to achieve what you what you need basically. So um, okay, so. There is this another thing that you can mention is that like um, when you are reading through the like the description of a level of a skill, if you like um, not necessarily again you don't need to be like exactly hundred percent able to do everything there, but if you have you are able to do like uh, like let's say eighty percent of of what is described, then you have the skill at that level. Um, otherwise, you you're probably under at a lower level of of uh, uh, of that skill. Anyway, so there are more you can learn from the Sphere website. Basically, as I, sh I showed you, there are like a list of um, so it's a level of responsibility. There is a, there a directory list. Uh, there are like a so these are standards. So if you like want to go through, understand what how, what the different terminology means and uh, how they divide everything, that could be useful for you. Um, okay. So this is like a generic thing about um, the industry framework, and the thinking behind, and like basically following more more of um, a standard or systematic way to go about like evaluation and um, evaluation and understanding of descriptions. Um, so this is like um, more or less uh, a recap of why you need to understand uh, job descriptions coming up with like uh, matching responsibility and qualification. Um, so aligning your skills um, with the, with the qualification, and then you can adapt your CV or cover letter to match, to echo the job key uh, responsibilities. Um, you can also pick up the keywords, like to understand the recurring keywords, like um, emphasize what is important for the company or for the job. Um, you can create like a checklist of these keywords and then basically make sure that like um, maybe you can adapt your cover letter for that as well. Um, again, this is something we mentioned, identify any potential red flags. That, that's what we mentioned before, that uh, if there is a mismatch between the title and the job description of responsibility. Um, uh, so it's not necessarily red flags, but like uh, things to keep in mind that can be like signs of something that is not um, um, okay, so there is actually a possibility for scabs, but I'm not sure that you can, something that you can detect easily, so I don't really need to mention it. But um, jobs, job ads that are too short, or they don't have enough um, information, uh, so that maybe like, uh, yeah, so it can be a bad sign about the company, maybe it's not as well organized, or like they don't have a well organized HR, and HR department. Um, 
repeated ads, like uh, the same ad, you can see it's the same ad for the same job is repeated over the, like uh, uh, appears over and over again. That means like uh, either like um, it's very hard to fill role or um, maybe there is a high turnover in the company. So these are things you can just keep in mind, extra things to keep in mind. Um, essentially, you can determine, you are going to be determining if the job and the company are a good match. So not only looking at the responsibility qualification, but also looking at the company and the team and how it works. So again, you have this discussion before. Um, sorry. So uh, basically, what you are going to be, because you're going to be adapting your CV or like your cover letter for the job, you're increasing your success rate. You can also like, this is uh, important, it's basic, but important. You have to pay attention to the application instruction. If you are asked to do, um, submit application in a particular way, a particular platform, like or sending an email with a particular job type, um, sorry, subject line, any that you have to follow this um, instruction precisely, just because it's um, it's a good sign, for good first sign that you are capable of following instructions, following the guide the guidelines. So you are like you have a respect for for the um, so the guidelines are given by the company, and um, like also have like uh, attention to details. So if you like miss something that was asked in the job application. Um, instructions, it's like, it's not a really good first impression, let's say. Um, so yeah, this is a general thing that I'll um, this is a recap basically of what we said earlier. So any questions so far or any comments you want to make for this? Because next we're going to just walk through one example together. Um, obviously I'm going to be asking you to tell me um, Let's just move on to that. And if there are any questions. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this. So it's a job in some machine. I don't know if like, um, um, let's see. So I was just looking at job um, openings. Um, if you want to look at this in, on LinkedIn for machine learning engineer. Um, and you can see this because I'm in Egypt, so this is what I get. Um, well, I actually was looking at work uh, jobs in Egypt, so that's why like, I got this one. So, um, looking through and keep in mind what we're talking about, things that you have to look at uh, at a job. Can you tell me what you? So, this is just the title part, the title part. So, it's a machine learning engineer. Um, the title. Can you tell me what you can gain, you know, what can you glean, or what you can extract from this? Like, um, you also have the link, so you can open it yourself. Can look at the full job description and tell me what you can glean from that. So let me also show you the. Let me show you the job description. And yeah, so this is a, the beginning of the job description. It's not the full thing. Um, so I just want you, to, I want your participation. Can you, what can you extract from this? So I will give you a chance to read a little bit. And so thinking about what we talked about, the main elements and what you need to like uh, look at to decide which, what, whether the job is, is suitable or not. Can you apply this into, for this job? Um, so I don't want to close this, so let me, um, share this, where is it? Yeah. Anything? Like it's, um, I'm not asking something that's complicated. It's just, um,
So, okay, let me ask a particular question. So, can you tell what is the level of this job from what you have seen? Like, um, okay, Mahoub is saying it's entry level. Why? What indicated that is an entry level to you, Mahoma? Sheila? Because in the overview of the job description, it has been written that it's an entry level job. Okay, so are you talking about this tag? Yeah. Okay. And so does that match with the with the description of the job? Is that you read so far? The key responsibilities? Like, I mean, it's not necessarily like, you, maybe you're not 100% sure, but like, does it match? Or is there is any mix match, do you think? Yes, Sheila? Yeah, I think it kind of matches because it doesn't require a lot. Okay, in my opinion, when it comes to the requirements, it doesn't equ require the knowledge of a lot of machine learning, um, um, packages that work with machine learning. So it's just, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I agree. It, it seems too much. Yes. Henok? Uh, I mean, there's a part that says you have to develop uh, models and algorithms. And uh, there's also a part that says you have to communicate with non-technical stakeholders. I mean, yeah. do, do entry-level uh, people do that? Okay, so yeah, so I mean, you cannot be 100% sure. It will depend on how big is the company, right? Um, how big is the team? It seems that um, if you have uh, like this level of communication, is it, are you the only person responsible for that? Or um, are you going to be part of a team that does that basically? And you're just like, um, is going to be part of your responsibility. So yeah, I agree that is not completely clear that it is going to be entry level or not, but the, 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 there is not an obvious mismatch. That's what I'm saying. But if you look at what is the company is, like how how big is the size and what like is going to be part of a team that does this. So, yeah, so in the end, what I'm saying is that um, it's, I'm not sure. Like, it's not, it's not, there is not enough information to, to say for sure that this is going to be, um, how to say, So it's not cannot say one hundred percent, or like I'm not gonna, cannot say for sure whether um, there is a mismatch or not. But like for me, it doesn't seem to be like a, an obvious um, reason to believe that is, there is a mismatch. Yes, Abdurrahman. Uh, also, they didn't ask for a specific uh, years of experience, so I think this look like uh, inter level. Yeah. So, okay, let's see if there is actually mention of experience at all. At all. No, that's right, you're right. So, yeah, because I'm not asking for experience, um, actually they are asking for experience. They just don't mention how many years. So they've proven experience as a machine learning engineer or similar role with a track record of delivering successful machine learning projects. They're not asking for particular years, but um they are asking for experience but this experience of course you can be like um 
sometimes the training can, can, can qualify basically as experience. Um, as long as they don't decide, like they're, they're not specifying um, years. So again, uh, so you're kind of correct. Um, yeah, but to, to completely, so as I said, um, it's good to go through an example to, to, to see that there are no, like, uh, you're not always going to be having like full information or going to be like 100% sure of what exactly is. Required. Can you see my screen actually? One second. Did I go? Okay. Yeah. So, anything else? Can you like, uh, so this is the, the question about entry level, whether like the level of it, um, the level of the job. Uh, so, what about the skills? What kind of like can you list the skills that are required or like some of the skills like at least from this? Yes, Hanok. Uh, it, it does say you need to know uh, different machine learning uh, models and algorithms, mm -hmm. and also frameworks like uh, Keras or PyTorch. Right. Um, okay. Can you specify a level for this, like at least generic in a generic terms? I mean, it doesn't say any level, but I think if they mention them, I think you need to be proficient at least in the things that are mentioned, at least uh, PyTorch and Keras. Yeah, so, right. Okay, good. Um, uh, looking at the, okay, so this is the, the first page. So there is this one as well, which also mentioned qualifications. Um, so, um, so anything else you can say about this? I, I mean, asking for skills maybe, is, is it too obvious? Like the question is too obvious? You can see like you don't see any value of listing this out. Um, so, okay, so there is machine learning models, algorithms, and leveraging tremors like Keras and PyTorch. So at least it's clear that you have to be able to use this, you have to apply them, not only like have a generic knowledge of, of how Keras and PyTorch work. Um, you have to have some experience using them. Um, implementing data process, pre-processing, feature engineering, model optimization techniques to improve model performance accuracy, again, you have to be at a level of like um, practical usage and like understanding. So not just uh, generic knowledge again. So if you look through like um, the levels of responsibility um, of like for a sphere, for example, um, so it, maybe they don't apply to particular tools. So, but like in generic machine learning, this uh, like, um, let's say taking the skill of machine learning that's the one that we looked at and um, the level of responsibility that described here is not level two it's not even level three i think could be higher than that right but we can look through this i understand so um uh, problem solving skills, analyze complex data sets, identifying patterns, starting the site, and inform decision making. You can look at, like, you can see that how it matches with, um, I think, level four of uh, machine learning, maybe. Um, uh, okay, so. So there is a support for deployment of machine learning. So these are data modeling. So this is, there are some data engineering, basically. And uh, so for the structure, it's like maybe front end or deployment of machine learning. So 
um, there is the communication skills uh, in cross-functional teams. So you have to be able to talk to other people who are not like um, in non-technical um, non stakeholders. So to be able to, to communicate um, with people from different, like, so these cross-functional teams, not necessarily that are completely non-technical, um, but also like people who are like from other, um, maybe the data engineers and that data scientists, uh, if they have in that team. Um, of course, and then you have like, this is uh, less of, uh, okay, you can say it's a skill, is that to learn and stay updated, and you can basically describe this in, in a way in the star, maybe following the star framework, how you have done this before. And um, basically in your experience, you have, you are able to do this. So you can just like transfer this or like describe this act if you're asked about it in an interview or something like that. So I'm just going through and mentioning the skills that are listed here. As a qualification, like there is an education qualification, so it's not particular, like they are not mentioning computer science alone, but mathematics, statistics, or related fields, um, proven experience. Again, we said, like, because they are not mentioning like years, so if they said in experience like three or plus years, then that is definitely not entry level and probably is not suitable. But so proven experience here, they are not, they are not specifying may, so maybe an experience like the experience that you gain through this training or like uh, something previous you have done other projects you have done before that you have evidence of so we have like your get uh, your get repos and um your like uh your um ten academy profile is you have proven experience basically you can you can basically leverage us as a, as experience here so as you see there is language um um skills required so this is uh, when you are going to be applying for jobs in different countries um they might find some other languages that are required so you have to pay attention to those because like they are uh, can be uh, immediately disqualifying <laughs> but uh, usually like um when the job requires the requires a, a language that is not english Sometimes you usually don't have, you will find the job itself, it's not in English listed. So, and um, I'm just mentioning this at uh, say offhand. So, again, you can see like this uh, requirement for programming languages uh, and the communication skills and like uh, again, mindset. So, these are soft skills. These are also part of the skills that you have to pay attention to, not only technical skills, skills of course. Um, so this is in general, and um, okay. So what's more is that, like, of course, you can you look at the. Let me just share the other. Like, this is the job itself. So you can see now the the job uh, the job ad in on LinkedIn. This is where I put this from. You can see there are more information here, of course, about the company itself sorry uh, um some information here about their mindset or what they are focused on um okay there is the emphasis that is remote okay so any um i don't know Okay, did they say that? Where does it say in the job description? I actually didn't see it. Where was that part? They are asking for people from Latin America. It's weird because this is a mismatch with what the job title is saying. Um, so there are these things. Um, I don't see it. 
on their website. Okay. In their website, they're saying that they only work with uh, people from Latin America. Let's see. Um, I didn't see that, but okay. Um, so sometimes there will be this much, much. I would say, I don't know if this is correct because the job title itself, sorry. The job title itself is mentioning Egypt and it's remote. So maybe there is uh, some kind of um, mistake somehow, somewhere. Um, okay. But yeah, there are things that you can catch like that. Um, and it might be like, keep in mind that sometimes it can be just like, um, um, okay. So depending, uh, it might be like just, um, a mistake somewhere. But, uh, okay, so just in general, recapping, like because we have to end the session right now. Um, okay, any, um, so the, the general focus of this session was to just how to maybe, um, maybe more systematically or paying more attention to how to read the job description. It's not, um, and basically introducing this, the the uh, the study framework, the SPIA framework, and just to which can will be helpful for you, um, if you want to evaluate your skills in a more um, systematic way, more like uh, following the the industry standard, which is useful, always useful to understand, but is required. What is you the jobs like? Um, you can even look at examples of of um, uh, like uh, particular jobs and how, what are the skills at what level are required for such a job. So just understand like where you are right now and how, where you want to arrive and how you can, where are the gaps and how can you, you can bridge them. Um, yeah, this is in general. So any kind of uh, questions or comments? Anything at all? Okay, so just a final thing about the, maybe this job uh, example we have, we're looking at. So what Johannes said is, uh, because I didn't actually, I just looked at the, I just picked the first um, job opening and just to use that as an example, I haven't actually done, uh, like uh, looked at the company uh, website, which just a profile on LinkedIn. And just looking through that, you can see that this uh, company is, looking for talent so they are not uh, sorry they are um how to say i don't know how to call them but they you know there are companies who basically will uh look for people for particular um 
job titles, but they, because they want to, basically they would say here, they will help you as base companies build their remote teams. So they are not going to be employing people directly uh, themselves, basically. So this is a good uh, thing to look at, actually, to understand. So if I look at the people who work at this company or jobs, this are not going to give you an info, an information about the job, the company you'll be working with, actually. So these are, um, maybe this is not the best job to apply for, actually, uh, in the end. So this was actually, um, so I'm saying a lot of actually here, but okay. <laughs> so in the end, this was not a good uh, example, let's say. Well, it was a good example because it's, we, we, we call this in the end with the help of Johannes. So US based companies, remote uh, remote jobs, usually this is not going to be applying for us, people who are not in the US or not in, in the Americas. So this, we can discard this. Uh, but like, uh, I mean, I hope this uh, like session was useful either way. Um, okay. Uh, um, okay, so like we can stop the recording here. If there are no, no more questions, oh, no, can you repeat it? Which part? The last thing I was saying? What do you mean, Abdurrahman? Uh, I mean about the company, uh, why it's not the uh, best uh, option to, to apply for, or you said something like this. Yeah, so um, I don't know what it's, what these kind of companies are called, but there are, um, I don't want to say something that I, I, I don't know enough about this to, to actually, so my advice not to apply for that, just like take that with a grain of salt. I'm not sure. Maybe you can ask someone, we, we like, um, let's seek. Um, don't want to say something that I'm not completely sure about. That's what I will, let me start with this. But in some, when you are looking for jobs, you will find some companies that are, let's say recruiters. They are not actually, going to be employing anyone. They are kind of like they would say, um, uh, we are going to help you find a job with a company. So I don't know how they operate, but sometimes like in some examples, they will be asking you basically to, let's say this is a worse kind of examples. They will be asking you to pay some money basically to find your job, something like that. But um, I'm not sure if there are like um, what are the others do. Do they like take your CV and then like they look for a, a job for you or something? I'm not sure about how they work, but it's not. Um, and I, in my own experience, I applied for some of them, but I didn't get anywhere. Uh, but um, but I usually avoided applying for that. I would usually look for a company that actually looking for to employ someone and it's clear what they are working on, what team they are, like they will, you will be joining and um, understanding what is the work environment. These kind of uh, companies that I was talking about before, it's not very clear how they, uh, they operate for me. So I'm just saying it seems like, um, for me, it seems like uh, maybe not worth your investing your time in pro uh, applying that there. Um, um, but um, so what I'm saying is not, I'm not sure hundred percent about this because I don't have enough information about these um, kinds of companies and how they work. Let's just let me um, put this disclaimer. Uh, so does this make sense to you, Abdurrahman? Or like, um, did I ask, <laughs> did I answer a question? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of, yes. Um, the, was there someone who wanted to say something? Like Wanda, I think I saw someone's hand go up. Um, yeah, do you have to, do you want to say something or? No, 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 it's okay. Okay, uh, so I will stop the recording here. If there is um, there are other questions, I will get back to you about this. Um, 
um, what I was saying before, Abdurrahman, I would I will I will try to get more information and get back to you maybe about this. Um, just I, like to make sure that I don't want to give you like bad advice. Um, so. So yeah, Johannes is 